So these ones are actually seeds that I saved from last year. So these are mixed. I don't know which is which. Hello, howdy, and welcome back. I'm Catherine, the Arrow Garden Homesteader. Today is a busy day, so I've got the plant update, got the seedling update, and I'll be starting some new seeds today. So, cabbage, always looking awesome, or at least this one. This one still hasn't sealed up, so I wonder if it's the inner leaves that will start the sealing process and these are just some extra outer leaves. I don't know, guess we'll find out. Time will tell. The peppers. This one is still looking awesome. This one's a bit spicy, so I did harvest one. I cut it up, had a bit of spice to it, so I just can't remember what it was. This one just doesn't look very good, and I don't know why, I don't know what's going on with it. It just looks poorly. So, I don't know. But, this one's got lots of flowers going on, there's flowers in there. All of this is new growth over here. It still has some peppers. Look, it's actually pushing out new growth right here by this pepper. You have to be really careful when I pull that one off, I don't pull off the new growth. So it still has a few peppers. It does have a uh, Leaning Tower of Pisa type thing going on here. And the shelf is empty. So I'll probably temporarily move some Arrow Gardens over here because I have a whole pile of them here. And I'm going to hang another light here for the seeds I'll be starting. So the uh, little pepper plant here is looking pretty good. So this is all new growth. This is all new growth here. We still have some of these old ratty leaves. So oh, that one actually just fell off. I think there's another one under here that might be ready to fall off. Yeah, there we go. So, unfortunately, it might be too little too late. So, I do think I might be seeing, I don't know if you can see that there, that little white spot. It might be spider mites. So, cherry tomato is looking pretty good. So, there's one back there starting to ripen. I got some flowers. I tapped on the flowers. There's another flower in there. I can see more growth. There's some more new growth right here. All this down here is looking like it's new growth. New growth. So it just needed a little space and probably it's probably getting a little bit more food now that it's in this smaller harvest. But uh, I guess we'll see. I might have to just let it go until those tomatoes go and then uh, just take this apart because again I need the room and I can always restart these. I might try to find I thought this one was the bigger cherry tomato seed I had, but I, I guess it isn't. So I'm going to look for a bigger cherry tomato and grow those. The strawberries. I can't tell. I just can't tell. So this is what they're doing. They're still... I don't even know if you guys can see that. I'm going to put my hand on the other side. I'm getting a little bit closer. I got a uh, pole in the way, but... Yeah, they're just... I don't know. They're just small. Kale is obviously doing really well. Oh, you know, I did remember I had a kale recipe for a salad I used to do years back. It was for a wilted kale salad. So I might try to uh, see if I can dig out that recipe, if I even still have it, and uh, give that a go. So that would be nice to, uh, that'd be a nice way to use the kale, that's for sure. Okay, tomatoes. There are a whole bunch missing. We came down, did a nice big harvest. Still have some uh, ratty old branches in here. I think I'm going to let this go for just a little bit longer, so I've got a grouping here that are getting ripe, I've got one lonely one over there, and then I think there's a couple down here and that's it. Oh, there's another one way in the back there. Um, this is looking pretty ratty despite it pushing out new growth. Now if I didn't have to worry about spider mites, I could actually just clip off some of this new growth and reroot it just the same way I did when this one was looking a little ratty. I remember I clipped the uh, the bottom off and stuck it in and put it, it just this is all new growth there aren't even any sponges down there I don't know if you can tell but I literally just clipped the top off jammed it in the basket and it just set out roots so if I weren't if I weren't concerned about the spider mites and all that and I wanted to save these plants I could certainly just cut some of this new growth off and reroot it but I don't know if you can see these but I got spider mites and I just need to uh, clean the room out, like really clean the room out. So what I might do is I have gone through, whoops, leaves in the way. I have gone through and I did harvest some seeds. These are hot little suckers, by the way. I cut this up and I was digging out the ribs and the seeds with my right hand. And my right hand, like two days later, is still on fire. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and I'll probably harvest all these up and I'll do a like small batch of cowboy candy because 
Hey, you know what? Cowboy candy is pretty awesome. I've been eating that on all kinds of things. And then I'll probably take this down. I don't know when I'm going to do that. Because, you know, I just have to slot it into a bunch of other things that I got going on. I'm going to do the same thing with this one. I'm going to let what's left ripen a little bit more until I can pick it and just ripen it on the counter. There really isn't too much going on in here. There's a little bit of new growth. I think these are new tomatoes, actually. All of this stuff up on top is new growth. This one is just going off into, you know, pepperland. So is that one back there. I don't know if you can see. There are a bunch of flowers back there. I mean, it's just going insane. So definitely it needed more food. This one is doing pretty good. I've got a whole bunch of new growth as well. But again, I think I'm going to have to just take these down, as sad as that is. And, uh, I mean, I guess I could try transplanting them outside. The problem is I'd have to cut them out of the basket without damaging the roots. And I don't know if they'll enjoy that process. So, and then they would still have to survive the spider mite. Okay, this is the other kale. So I was able to put it down on a lower shelf so I could raise the hood up. It is just, it's doing really good. I mean, cutting the top off certainly didn't hurt it pushing out a lot of growth, but the growth is a little, it's a little different. It didn't bush out on the bottom like I wanted it to, so I don't know. Your mileage may vary. Chive, still looking sad. I might just need to get new chive seeds and uh, try again. They just don't seem like they're getting any bigger, which is just weird. These ones, a little bit of yellowing going on. I wonder if it might be time to start giving them a little bit of food. So if I were going to feed these, I would take my AeroGarden stock solutions. Not the one that came with the AeroGarden. The stock solutions I've actually been mixing up myself. And I'd mix it up at a quarter strength and then just give them some of that. These ones, despite looking really ratty, there is a lot of nice new growth in here. So there's an, I don't know if you can see them, but there's a lot of, if you look at it kind of on the side, there's a lot of upright growth and it's looking really good. So I think sort of like that initial growth just kind of dried up and fell over, but all the in inner leaves, like that next leaf that comes up, is all looking pretty good. So, even though it looks bad, it's actually not as bad as it looks. So, there's all the other ones, the leeks back here, the celery, all the peppers. Oh my gosh, all the peppers. I think I got another one coming up in here, so. And then, more peppers, and then, got my asparagus. The asparagus is starting to get a little out of hand. Um, I was actually thinking of moving these down to a lower shelf so I can put the light up a little higher, but I don't want to put the light up too high. So what I might do is I've got a smaller, um, it's a four by four. No, it's a three by three. So it's not this big, huge, long one that is a three by six. I don't know if you can tell, but this holds six pots by three pots. I've got one that holds um, three by three by three. Um, I can move those these asparagus into it and put it in an area where it would get taller light. Like I could just put it under an arrow garden hood, honestly. Um, but these pots have holes in the bottom of them, and I don't want to destroy anything. So it has to be on something. So I'll see what I can do. I could actually just put it in some of these little pots, but the problem is they'd only hold two, I think, which isn't very much. So. I don't know, yeah, I think it would hold two, but I don't think it would hold more than two, so. But that is the plant update for down here for the Arrow Gardens and the seedling update. So after this, I am going to go and I'm going to set up and start some tomatoes. I will show you. So today is going to be what tomatoes did I decide to plant and getting those started. Okay, so I'm gonna start filling up some pots for seeds. So I gotta get some dirt going, so I'm gonna put in some peat moss. Okay, some perlite, I don't have much left. Topsoil. And a little bit of compost. give that a really good mix and then I'm going to pour some boiling water in it so it can uh, 
kill off anything that might attract fungus gnats. Okay, boiling water. Okay, that was not at a rolling boil, it was just at a very hot. I want to be able to get in here and mix it up a little bit. I also realized that it's probably totally unnecessary because I already have fungus gnats and I don't think this is going to get the problem to go away. So, just have to wait till I get all of the dirt and plants out of the room to get rid of those. But if you're trying to prevent them, this would be the way to do it. You certainly wouldn't be bringing any larvae in, that's for sure. Okay, I'm going to keep filling pots and then I will bring you back when I start putting seeds in. I'll show you what seeds I'm doing. Okay, i got lots of planting to do today, so I uh, don't even know where to start. might start with the onions. So I had to wet this down a little bit. It's kind of been sitting around for a little while, but I uh, had some of my onions sprout, and normally I just uh, stick them in the garden and let them uh, just go to flower. And then I can potentially collect seeds from them. So these ones have been sitting in water for a little bit just to give it a little bit of uh, root development. That one I just found today, so it uh, didn't get that. Just kind of get that in there. We'll just let it root up. Some of them are, there's actually two in one, but I'm not too concerned about it. I'll just stick it in the ground anyways. It'll just do its thing. Oh, it actually did make roots. So it got, uh, the bulb ball got used up, but I guess it uh, still had enough energy in there to put out some roots. And last one. I want to get those roots down in there. That was pretty easy. I'm going to go to this one next. I hope you can see that okay. I'm going to do peas. So, I labeled all my plant stakes. This is a mix of little marble and Alaska. So, these ones are actually seeds that I saved from last year. So, these are mixed. I don't know which is which. Some of them are uh, little marble, some of them are Alaska. But I'm going to take them, and I'm probably going to put about three in each one, and then cover those up. I feel like I never get enough peas to grow. Something always eats my peas. If it isn't the uh, rats, it's the squirrels and birds. Oh my gosh, the birds were horrible last year. They would sit on my trellis and literally just pull the flowers off and any other little like tendrils and things and eat them. I tried putting out a bird feeder because I thought, thought it would help. Oh, I'll just redirect them. Yeah, no, it didn't. But, you know, it is what it is. I guess I did not need these other ones. And I did drop one in here somewhere. Be fun to find. Some of them will just have four. Okay, so I'm just going to push them down and just cover them up with a little bit of dirt. Now, my soil is moist, but it's it's really not that moist, so I'm probably going to have to uh, give these a bit of water before I really uh, get them going. I'm probably putting them down about half an inch to an inch, give or take. There, one down. It is chilly out. The sun is out, barely. Okay, so I've got uh, ground cherries. I'm going to do this one with ground cherries, uh, some, some flowers, some herbs, that kind of thing. So this is just going to have a lot of stuff in it. 
Oh, these are tiny seeds. Okay, so I'm going to put just a small sprinkling in each. Well, I'm not a fan of these little tiny ones. I feel like every time I use them, by the time I squish the bottom to get the uh, plant out, it's like they just end up destroyed. So, but if you need to plant a lot of things, this is kind of the way to do it. Okay, so I'm just going to kind of poke them in, cover them up. They don't need to go down very deep, but they do it's best to cover them. There you go. That was, that was ground cherries. Let's see what I got next. I've got to do a little bit of organizing here, I think, so I can figure out how many how many of each I need to do. Okay, so I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven left. I might be able to do two of each. Let's see. Let's do these two will be cauliflower. I normally just tip it in the direction that it goes. But I just kinda have to remember. So two cauliflower. And do some whoops. Not that many. Okay. Do some cauliflower. I'm just gonna try to put like two or three seeds per instead of like a whole pinch. Not had much luck with cauliflower or broccoli, but I think I did start it a little late last year. So. Probably because I got the seeds late. Yeah, there's that. That's cauliflower. So I'm going to try to get those poked in. And I might just go back and actually put a pinch of dirt on all of these. Kind of the better way to go. Next is broccoli. I have it. It's calabrese. Calabrese? Oops, and I just lost some seeds. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna do Alyssa next. Ooh, yeah, more small seeds. Okay, you know what? These are older seeds. I'm going to put a little extra on. There we go. I'm going to have to put them back in. I'm just going to push them down a little bit. They probably don't need a lot on top of them because they are pretty small, but I do want to make sure they uh, do get covered a little bit. I'm going to do some zinnia. I've got two different kinds, so we'll start with the one that... I guess this one is not open. Start with the older ones. Might do one row of each. We'll see. See how many are in here. Such interesting seeds. Now, if you know me, I hate thinning. So what will end up happening, I'm sure, is that I will just go through and uh, split them up. But we'll see. We'll see how everything does. These ones. I'm gonna push them down a little bit. Get them covered up. If you have a bigger seed. I think they can handle it. That one. Okay, so I got uh, this will do one marigold and one of each basil. Always do more later. So this is marigold we harvested from our garden last year. I have no idea the best way to do this. That's the seed part. There you go, there are the seeds. Okay, so just uh, Put a few in each one. Again, I could probably just split them up later. That's a lot of seeds. Okay. Yeah, that's a lot of seeds. And to a regular basil, and then I got this uh, purple basil that I'm going to do as well. I don't know how well this grows, so. Pretty small. I'm just gonna kind of like just lightly tap them in, give them a light cover, and then let's get some of these purple ones going. Ooh, not many in there. That's for dang sure. And put fewer in these ones. There goes the neighbor's dog. Okay, same thing. Give those a quick little cover, light cover. 
There you go, another tray down. Okay, and this one I'm going to do these Rio Grande tomatoes, because I haven't had those yet. They do look like an uh, aroma style, so kind of hopeful, but we'll see. Then I'm going to do some of these uh, Super Sweet 100 Hybrid uh, cherry tomatoes. This is an indeterminate cherry tomato, so I guess we will see. It's probably going to get completely out of hand, but it wouldn't be the first time I've had a tomato plant get completely out of hand. We used to do these pear-shaped cherry tomatoes, yellow ones, and uh, they were good, but yeah, they would really get out of hand. Again, I will just separate these as needed. Okay, so, looks like I just got two. Bury those a little bit. They will eventually go into uh, different pots. I will up pot all of these, even though these are pretty big pots. So, yeah. ah, more in here. Okay, those are the Rio Grande. They're pretty cheap too. So this will probably be the rest of this tray, honestly. Push those down a little. Get them covered up. Okay, so I did not use these. I'm going to take these out for now until I have a better use for them. Because in the meantime, I guess I could put something else there. Let's get rid of this. Get those out of the way. Okay, so this is all. This one will be all Roma. Plus, I'll probably do, do those three as Roma. So. These are very old Roma seeds, so I'm just going to use the rest of them up. If they don't sprout, it's no big deal. Again, I will just uh, up-pot those as they grow, put them in their own pots once they get bigger. Okay, like that. And then the rest of this tray will be beefsteak. So, get my Romas separate from my beefsteak. Now these are also old seeds, so I will just be going to town on them. Like I said, there's a lot of people in the area who uh, will willingly take free plants, so I'll have a hard time getting rid of stuff. And I can always try selling them too. There we go, cover those up. I do want them covered a little bit, because I want them to uh, send down roots and get kind of a strong stem. but. When I transplant them, I will also make sure that I bury them down so that they can get even stronger. Okay. I think I have another plant cover thing, but and then this is Roma. Let's get this going. Yes, I'm putting lots. I want lots of tomatoes. I might put extra dirt on those. There we go. Lots of Romans. Try to spread them out a little bit so they're not clumped together, but hey, it happens. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and this one is just going to be a little easier to add another layer over top instead of trying to bury them down. Okay, so I don't quite have the rest of my grow light set up, but I will get these down in the room and a little bit of water at the bottom of the trays because the dirt was a little a little on the dry side, but uh, they should be okay. And then I'll try to get my light set up in the next day or three. Kind of doesn't matter until they germinate, but the second they germinate, you really want to get them under lights. That way you don't get uh, long, leggy. I guess it wouldn't matter in this case because I can bury them a little deeper, but you really don't want long, leggy tomatoes for your garden. And another big day, putting lots of seeds in, getting stuff ready for the outdoor garden. I hope you are starting your seeds along with me, and we can do this journey together. I hope you have enjoyed this video. I hope you found it useful. If you did, please give it a like and share so other people can also find this video. And I will see you next time on the Arrow Garden Homestead.